Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. In today's episode, I'm going to be responding to another question from the viewer Joe Montana. I'm assuming that he's Asian. Based on the questions that he's asking me, that's okay. And the reason why I'm still currently resp actively responding to comments and questions with videos um, for free uh, is because I haven't set up the, the business yet, but I will. But also because it is a very uh, teachable moment these these uh, questions while I when I do my regular videos you know there's a, there's a point to it there's a certain lesson I'm trying to get across these uh, questions that I receive are feedback from my audience and give give me an understanding of what people are struggling with and um, so yeah I well, because this channel is dedicated to helping men, and giving men information to help them obtain better outcomes in life, I'll continue to do it. All right, so let's get started. This question is, again, in all caps, I guess he's screaming at me. What's up, bro? Can you make a video about your travel dating experiences from different countries you've been to as an Asian guy? Tell us some interesting stories with girls you met as an Asian guy. Did they show you love? Thanks. Hmm. Okay. I will, but so as to, so as to, um, you know, narrow the, the scope of, of that, uh, question and this answer, uh, I'll say it again. My travels were never for the purpose of womanizing. It was for exploring the world and for dancing. And so while I, during my travels, I certainly have met women the the majority of the women i met while traveling uh, that are worthwhile to e to even talk about are are in colombia because i've spent extensive amount of time traveling there over 10 years and i even lived there for part for a good part of the year in 2016 before moving back to the states and so so a little bit of a background it was the, I'm 38. It was the year 2005 when I graduated from engineering school after having zero experience with women for four years because engineering school is just awful. We were, I was just trying not to die taking brutally difficult uh, science and math classes and the ratio was completely awful and what was available was uh, not to my liking. Let, let's just say Okay, uh, this is the Dungeons and Dragons theory, right? Everyone has like 50 stat points to be allocated, right? On average. Most of these girls that go to engineering school, all their point allocation goes to intelligence. And the rest, mm, their, their scores, let's just say they're tanked, all right? So <laughs> uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. But um, at age 23, I discovered Latin dancing and I actively started going out. And I didn't get to uh, Colombia until three years after that in 2009 when I did a whirlwind trip of the country, five cities in nine days with one of my best friends. And we were just running around like crazy. No nightlife because that was in his style. And I said, this is an interesting country. And I wanted to go back to explore Cali because I, the first time I went to Cali in 2009, I didn't even get to go salsa dancing. So uh, I decided to go back in the year 2011 by myself in search of salsa uh, to just to see what I would... Um, well, what I would find. So that's why, although I went to Colombia for the first time in 2009, I pegged really the start of my life in that country in 2011, 10 years now. And when I got there for the first time, I, I, I couldn't understand how different it was. It took years and many trips afterwards to process what the women were like, what the culture was like, what the dating was like, and what I saw. My experience, my personal experience, 
was just so indescribably good and amazing that uh, it changed my life forever. And it was so good that after 2013, I just basically abandoned dating in America and I went back to Colombia as much as I could. And I was, and I was good with that. I'm, I'm okay with long periods of not dating or meeting anybody. I'm, I'm totally cool with that. This was a lifestyle I chose. But what was more surprising was that despite starting as a young man leading from 2006 to 2011, my stomping ground was the Latin mega clubs of New York City, the Copacabana, LQ, Latin Quarter, and even some of the techno clubs, Webster Hall, Pasha, these, these giant big mega clubs that were popular back in the day, China Club, right? Um, Etc. Then, so I thought I had it good. I met great girls. Uh, a lot of them were not from the United States. They were foreigners. But when I got to Colombia, the the I I found myself connecting really strongly with girls because, as I've mentioned before in other videos. Just as a result of my lifestyle and hobbies and enjoyment of the nightlife and the dance scene in New York, my sample size of the amount of women I met and talked to and connected with was enormously large compared to most average men, especially, uh, you know, uh, men that might be, you know, shy or, or, or married men, etc. So for years, call it five years straight, and I'm being conservative with the numbers, I would go out minimum 200 nights a year after work to, uh, uh, part, um, after work, happy hours, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, probably Thursday. And I was in the middle of Manhattan. It was easy. Get off work, boop, hop over to the club or a party and, and have a go at it. Have, you know, get some dancing in, talk to people, have some fun. It was a great life. And in the process, let's say I would conservatively meet five women a night. Five women times 200, 200 per year would lead me to conservatively meeting 1,000 women a year. 1,000 women times five years, that's 5,000 women. And then so I thought that I had a really good understanding of what women were like, what I liked, what I didn't like. And inevitably, I would come across and meet a great girl, one that, you know, ones that I would say, wow, this is great. This is, you know, I, I like this girl. She She's energizing. She's an you know, FBI, as Kevin Samuels would say, feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. And I want to emphasize the I part some more as I continue developing the channel, the inspirational part. And it would take a long time, but inevitably I would come across one just because of the constant interactions. When I got to Colombia, I met a great girl that I recently reconnected with after 10 years. And she was just great. And, and then after a few years of traveling to Colombia, I realized a pattern that night after night, almost every night I would get the phone numbers of and, and meet girls I really enjoyed. And I realized that, wait a minute, the girls that I am meeting here in Cali, Colombia, I... I am consistently finding girls that I really like and really connect with well on a nightly or near nightly basis. I'm finding more of these girls every other night than I do going out 200 nights a week in uh, 200 nights a year in the United States of America. So, you know, this is, this was like a 10, a hundred X efficiency, 
right? Assuming that, you know, I meet a, a great girl that I want to you know, follow up with every other night in, in Colombia. So every other night I meet a, a great, great, great girl, the, the likes of which I do not meet in 200 nights of going in America, going out in, in the USA, in New York City. So this, for me, to, for the type of girls, I really like the really feminine, the, the Latina, uh, and, and, and just girls with, you know, s similar uh, tastes, especially salsa music and, and, um, and, and, you know, the salsa culture. I would meet, it, I, I still blows my mind as I talk about it today consistently. You know, I could go out 100 nights in a row or, you know, one or 200 nights a year in the USA, or I can just go to Colombia where it's almost guaranteed where I connect with girls I really, really like. And after two years of traveling there as much as I could, and, and the pattern being consistently, you know, like uh, meeting the girls wasn't the only reason and, and the salsa was just a huge part of it. And, and friends, including men that I've come to love and consider them as brothers over the years, it was just unmistakable for me personally that things were just vastly, vastly better to the point from an economic and energy efficiency standpoint. It made no more sense to make even any attempts in the USA. and. That's what I did. End of 2013. I just, I remember after coming back from a trip to Feria de Cali, which is a massive salsa festival and celebration in Cali every year around Christmas time. And after having met uh, the most amazing and inspiring and still to this day, woman in my life, inspirational beyond words. I mean, we're talking like if this was... Uh, you know, the olden times where people would carry, you know, a pocket watch where they would open up, she would be on that photo. Yes, I know it's um, old fashioned and, you know, romantic and, you know, uh, what's the word? Idyllic. Anyway, she would be on that. She was so, was so inspired and made me feel things that I did not expect to feel as a man of 30 years of age. I thought I'd seen everything, but I was wrong. And then I realized, you know, I, I don't, I don't need to do anything in the U.S. anymore. I just need to go back to Colombia more and more. And that's what I did. So did they, and did they, these girls show love to Asian guys? Well, yeah, duh, I am one. They absolutely did. And it was not a problem at all. And for those men of other races, uh, especially black men, I encourage you to check out my video, uh, Is Columbia Good for Black Men? Where I explain that specifically in Cali, which is where I know the, know the most, it is the most truly diverse and race mixing and uh, fluid and smooth place I've ever been to where all races spontaneously mix and form friendships without friction or much segregation that I'm able to determine. And all right, uh, and also part of this question, tell us some interesting stories with girls you met as an Asian guy. Did they show you love? Yes. And I will tell you guys the story of a girl that I did not hook up with that became a lifelong friend and was also part of the FBI, the feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. And in, in, in editing, uh, I, I will put her, I will put up a photo of her and, and, and this would be the point. So here's the photo. And the only reason why I put up this photo is because she herself is a public figure and she is a she's a she's been a friend for for 10 years now i met her my first night in cali she is a professional salsa dancer and runs one of the largest and mo most largest and most successful 
uh, salsa schools of Colombian style Cali, Cali style salsa in Europe. Uh, she's based out of Paris, France, and I'll leave her, the information to her school below if you guys ever want, want to train. But I met her our very first night. And we, when, we, when we started salsa dancing, uh, be, okay, let, let me go back a bit. So I dance New York style salsa. It is very different, very different from what they do in Colombia. And uh, because there were just not many travelers at the time, and definitely even fewer uh, uh, New York style salsa dancers there, uh, everyone would just, you know, dance their usual Colombian style. But when I grabbed her and I started dancing and trying to make it work in her style, I, I, I felt it. I realized, yeah, you know, this is a professional. And I saw her dancing early and I said, I can make my style work with it, work with her. She can follow this. And she was able to. So I busted out all the sauce I had and we, we actually stopped the club and everyone just stopped what they were doing and just in a big circle and made a, you know, they gave us all space and they just looked at us and they were like, wow, what are these people doing? This is so cool. There's a Chinese guy dancing with a local uh, girl who was a bit of a celebrity, you know, in the salsa scene and then they're just making magic. And then from there, we became, you know, uh, became friends. And even though we never hooked up, we did flirt with each other and, and uh, you know, we got, got playful a little bit, but I wasn't her type. And to be honest, she's not exactly my type, despite being hot as heck. Uh, she already had a boyfriend at the time. And the next morning we, we met up, we were just hanging out. And then, you know, we, we kind of already knew where we stood with each other already. Just, um, but what she did was she casually strolled over and just, uh, you know, I guess the word is sachet. And then she sat down next to me, draped her arm around me. And then she just like, you know, started like, you know, running her hands through my head. And she's like, oh, mi amor, mi lindo, mi lindo chinito. Fue un placer bailando contigo. And then like, blah, blah, blah. She just laid it on thick in the Spanish, right? And, and just, and I just realized, holy cow, this girl's power level is extremely high, right? For a lot of, if you guys watch the Fresh, Fresh and Fit podcast, a lot of these girls are masculine as heck, don't know how to act. Their mouths are a liability. They don't know how to get men. They don't know how to flirt and are just, some are just awkward and just crass as heck, but not this girl. She was classy. She was hot. She knew it and she knew how to use every tool in a woman's arsenal to attract a man, right? From her long hair, which she would, you know, which she would just throw around from smelling good, being in shape, uh, not being afraid to, to touch men, right? And, and speak sweet words and you know, cater to a man. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, th this is, this is an alpha female, not the alpha female that, that you, you see going on like Steve Harvey and, you know, saying, Oh, I'm a boss B I get, uh, you know, I, I run my own business. I, I make six figure, uh, in income. I'm strong, independent. Like, uh, I'm an alpha female. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You're, uh, those are not alpha females. If those are alpha females, why the heck are they so damn single? Do you know, alpha females are the ones like her. Fran like the one, like my friend that I'm talking about, Francie, okay? And other Colombianas that were in her inner circle of friends who targeted the, the, the foreign men that they liked. And it was almost like they chose the men. So many men, the younger, inexperienced white guys and gringos that they were fond of, those men had no chance. They didn't even know what to do. They were straight up overwhelmed by the amount of girl game that these that these latinas had and these latinas got their men and the majority of the, these girls are married now living in europe 
with their husbands. That's how good these girls are. These girls know that they want a man. They know that they're, they need a man. They don't try to put up the strong and independent front. Their desired outcome is a man and they go after it like a laser. I'm talking about uh, the movie Sniper. Okay, that the sniper Vasily Zaitsev in the movie Stalingrad. Okay, boom. One shot, one kill. That's it. That's how good they are. They specifically targeted and hunted these men and they made it work. And my gosh, I just, I applaud these women who are able to obtain the their desired outcomes of a man. Meanwhile, we have legions of, uh, of women in America thinking that they're boss babes and they're alpha. <laughs> okay. Foreign women, these Latinas, these Asian girls, they are stealing these men, these American men, these European men. And in this global market pace, there is competition. These Latinas that I'm talking about are causing their American counterparts, the female ones, to die alone. The immigrants that come into America. And, I, and I'll talk, I'll make a whole other video about this. The immigrants that are coming to America, the Mexicans, the Nicaraguans, the Venezuelans, the Colombians, they are taking the men of American women. They're taking them. And, and for my channel and the guys who I talk to, who I convince or, or inspire to travel to Colombia and, and other places, a lot of these men, once they realize what it's like and what the women are like, they ain't going back. Nope. I didn't. I'm gone. It's over, right? That is, and they talk about wanting high value or high earning men, right? A lot of these guys, when they, when they set foot on, in, in Colombia and the, the, in Brazil, they're like, nope. Once they realize what is available to them, then they ain't never going back. And of course, this will never be popularized. It, it'll cause the feminists to, to freak because the whole objective, one of the main objectives of that was to unrestrict the choices of women when it comes to mating and dating and competing and to give them sexual selection as opposed to being selected or having the selection made for them by the family in a traditional patriarchal society such as India or, or China or, or, or the Arab world. We're talking unrestricted uh, f female, um, you know, exploration and utilization of their strategy and sexual selection while restricting that of men's. What I'm trying to do is provide men more options and to reverse that and to inform men that they have options in a place such as South America and Colombia. And I fully expect that this channel will not last long and, I'm my, and I will be migrating to Odyssey as I learn more about it. Right, this YouTube guys, uh, forget it. Right, heaven forbid. Like, I, eventually, when I get big enough, I will piss off people, and I will start getting copyright strikes, just like everyone else. And while I'm starting here, this ain't the final destination. So, folks, if you like my stuff, uh, be prepared for that. Uh, let, let's uh, help me grow, please, and inform men that they have options elsewhere. And Many men have have uh, connected with Colombianas and girls in Brazil and to be able to build a happy life and have a family and have a wife and to make it work. Too many men are living lives of quiet desperation, alone, lonely, not happy, slowly killing themselves with food, alcohol, negative thoughts, loneliness, and drug use. And if they could experience what Colombian women could be like, it would give them hope. All right. Uh, I'll leave, I'll leave it off here. Uh, Joe, I hope I answered your question. And if, if you need me to work with you, um, I think a, li a little bit 
would really help you go the go a long way. I could I could get you to you know in a life direction moving at least directionally accurate really quickly. And again, not pushing it, just offering it because I know that as I start picking up clients, it's just the, the, the kind of questions that I'm dealing with are just what I thought was foundational that every man would figure out just by living his life. But I've come to understand that that is not the case. There are many men have large, important gaps missing in their social and economic and even spiritual foundation, right? And I'm, I'm here to help. That's what I want to do. This is Sane Chan signing off. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'm reminding you to always cogitate and analyze.